Welcome to the show, Dr. Rebecca. We're so happy to have you here. This topic is very, very important, whether people know it or not, they're going to know how important it is by the end of this next hour. So I have been looking for somebody to come on and talk about food dyes in particular. And I just happened to hear you a while ago on Dr. Morgan Nolte's podcast, and she's been on here as a guest and I've been on her podcast and I'm a big fan of hers. So when I heard your story, it's like, it made me sad and angry and so many emotions all at once. And um, yeah, we're going to talk more about how food dyes affect kids, but also how it can affect you throughout the lifespan. So this is a very important message. So I'm very happy to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. We, I love talking about this because the more people know, the more they can make uh, uh, healthier choices for them uh, and their families and, and not only just physically healthy, but also emotionally and mentally healthy as well. Right. And so many people aren't educated on this specific topic at all because it's just kind of swept under the rug or it's just, well, maybe that applies to some people, but definitely not me. And, um, you know, that's, that's not why my kids are acting up, but let's take a step back and tell us about how you got to this area and why this is so important to you. And I didn't tell our um, our listeners that you also do it, did a very important Ted talk that we will link in the show notes and it's 18 minutes. It's 18 minutes that can, can change the course and the traje trajectory of a life. So, um, yeah, tell us your story and how you got to where you are. Okay. Yeah. I had, um, no intention of ever knowing about artificial food dyes. Uh, I was in, you know, I, I went to grad school for cognitive neuroscience, but nothing, nothing prepared me for what I was going to experience as a mother. You, you said that a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know this. I knew nothing about artificial food dyes. And yes, it has been studied and there's if the fine gold association has been talking about it since the seventies, but I knew nothing. So I ended up having a child who was reactive to artificial food dyes. We had no idea. We didn't know for years. And, you know, as a mom looking back at it, I beat myself up sometimes for not check, catching it earlier, but we did the whole, okay, well, let's do behavior modification. Let's work on all the psychological aspects. He's acting up. Why is he acting up? Uh, and I didn't stop and think it was his food until we got pretty kind of serious into it. So he was in second grade. He's always, he was always an active kid, always. Uh, and very smart. He's a, he's an intelligent kid and his doctors used to dismiss all of his stuff with, well, he's just really smart. Not that that's an excuse, but apparently it was. So by second grade, he was having some issues in class. His first grade teacher was fantastic, modified his curriculum for him. Second grade teachers wouldn't and the effects of what he was eating started to compound. So he wouldn't be able to concentrate with his homework. And I would beg him, come on, bud, just focus. I know you can do this, just focus. And one day he said to me, I can't focus mom. My brain is buzzing. Mm -hmm. So I know that brains aren't supposed to buzz. <laughs> so I kind of learned that in grad school, you know, brains aren't supposed right. to buzz. So, <laughs> right. so I started to do some research and there was nothing in any of published research about brain buzzing. And I started looking up and uh, found a blog post, which I have never been able to find since. And I would love to find the girl who posted it. She was 15 and she talked about how red 40 made her brain buzz. So we thought, okay, fine, we'll pull red 40. So we did, we, over the Christmas break, we pulled red 40 and the brain buzzing went away and it was awesome. So did a lot of the ADHD type of behaviors, the fidgeting and the not being able to pay attention in class. And so we thought, okay, wonderful. We let him continue to eat other food dyes because most of the research is on red 40. There's very little research on anything else. There's a couple articles on yellow. There's nothing on green and blue. So by that summer, we were having some escalating issues. He was having fits over nothing. He would just become so emotional. He would erupt he would like scratch at himself and pull at his clothes and he would swing on me, which is, he's such a sweet kid. So it was really out of the ordinary. And, and 
we went to Hawaii. Uh, we were having maybe one meltdown a week. Then it became to one every couple of days and it become, became one every day. So then we go to Hawaii with uh, my family and uh, he was getting the uh, shaved ice and he was, it couldn't have red. So he would have yellow. So yellow became the second go-to and he would get shaved ice every day, twice sometimes. Cause we're with grandpa and granny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So by the end of that trip, we're having three, four meltdowns a day. We come home, we're having meltdown after meltdown and this deceit and the lying and the, the feral look in his eye. Another uh, parent ex explained it as a feral look. And it was this aha. Yes. That's exactly what I'm looking at in my child. He doesn't look like him. Mm -hmm. So what started to happen was he started to want to die. And in hindsight, what he meant was, I don't want to live like this anymore, which I get it. But what it came out was, uh, get me a knife. I just want to kill myself. And he just wanted to end his life. So and he no, was seven at that he point. Seven. He was seven. Oh, oh my yeah, he was, he was seven. It was shortly before his eighth birthday. He was seven. I know that it is rare to have children think about suicide much more common in adolescence. So then I, it, what started thinking occurring to me was, Oh my God, we're going to lose him. He won't make it until he's a teenager, unless I figure out what the heck's going on. So I started doing more and more research, came to the conclusions, screw it. We're pulling all dyes out of his diet, right? We're just going to test this out. So we pulled all the dyes out of his diet and he crashed. He crashed within 24 hours and he slept. He would sleep all night. He would sleep all day. He had no stamina, no energy, no nothing. And then it was craving cheese and milk, which was the weirdest thing, but not weird in that there were nutrients in there. I think that his body was lacking in hindsight, looking back, it was disrupting his endocrine system. It was disrupting his metabolism. He was gaining six pounds a year. He gained six pounds in six weeks after we pulled him off dyes. And he was really thin. He, you could see his ribs through his shirt. And so his metabolism changed. And when he eats yellow, now his metabolism changes. So we, we really started to understand just what the effects were on him after pulling yellow and all the other colors, never once has he wanted to commit suicide. We are seven, he's 17 now. And, um, the effects are still there. Uh, I went to a symposium, California held a symposium to investigate artificial food dyes. The office of health hazard assessment pulled in researchers from around the world and the FDA and big candy and, and other people that had a stake in this. And they had a two day symposium and out of it came a 300 page document that pretty much states that there is enough evidence showing that artificial food dyes cause a reaction in children. Hallelujah. What came out of it for us out of that is I got to talk to researchers, lots of researchers and uh, the researchers that deal with ADHD kids, we've had our son tested. He doesn't have ADHD. There's, he doesn't have the list of things that the behaviors demonstrate. Uh, so he's not an ADHD kid. So it's not just ADHD kids that are affected by artificial food dyes. They are more hyper affected, but not all. Cause some of the research out there <clears throat> says that ADHD children are more likely to be reactive to food dyes but other kids are as well. So what I got out of it was they told me about half of the children grow out of it during puberty. Our son was 13 at the time. So we were like, okay, maybe, maybe he'd be the one. No, uh, he's 17 now. So half grow out, yeah, half don't, which means we have a large percentage of our population of adults that did not grow out of their food dye reactivity and probably have no idea that they're reacting to artificial food dyes. Yeah. So yeah, we have an increase in depression and anxiety and yeah, there's a lot of reasons that we blame it on. I blamed my son's behavior on a lot of different things that were all him and his environment 
never once did we step back and say, all right, it's something that you're eating. So there's probably a lot of adults walking around on medications that probably don't need to be because they're still consuming artificial food dyes. And our son is completely, he can't have anything, not a single drop, not on his skin, not in his mouth. He can't eat it. We had to eliminate everything around him that he breathes that has artificial colors like candles and really? air fresh. Yeah. Oh, wow. So what happens if he breathes in something that has a color? It's like the same thing as if he eats it, the same thing if it's on his skin. I sprayed him down once with my sunblock. We were up in Lake Tahoe. We live near Lake Tahoe. So we were in Tahoe and I sprayed him down with my sunblock, which has bronzer in it, not thinking that this is a problem. And he had a reaction and we couldn't figure out where the reaction came from. And then next time we were there, I sprayed him down again. And this time he got in the water right away and looked down on the water and the water was like blue and green and yellow. And I looked at the ingredients in that sunblock and the first ingredient is blue. The second was yellow. I know I, the, it was the bronzer. So I, I have since found articles demonstrating that what you put on your skin shows up in your bloodstream within 24 hours, depending on what it is. So, so yeah, he can't know nothing to brush his teeth. All of his toothpaste has to be dye free, his mouthwash, his shampoos, conditioners, lotions. Yeah. Yeah. He is extremely reactive. And that's what the researchers had said when they were talking to him and us. And some kids are mildly reactive, but they're still reacting. Our son is just extremely reactive but he's not alone. I can't tell you how many parents I've talked to in the last seven years since I released, since the Ted talk was released in 2016. And, and I hear from parents almost weekly, sometimes right. several a week. Right. And just like so many diseases, it runs on a spectrum and so many reactions, but, um, I you just wonder, like, it's so fascinating and so crazy. Like I, like the ingesting makes sense. And even the skin as you know, as the biggest organ, but I never thought like, can, I don't burn candles in our house just because I know there's a lot of toxic ingredients that can be in there, but I would mm -hmm. never think like, oh yeah, well, you're breathing it in. It's going into the lungs, which will eventually get into the bloodstream. It's just mind boggling. And you don't even think that there's dye. I mean, obviously there's dyes in candles, but you wouldn't yeah. think that they, that someone would react from that. So do you know, is, I mean, this is, this is all so, so fascinating, but do you know how food dyes? I mean, obviously they're made in a lab. Like how did they even ever come to be? I mean, obviously there's a natural, it's like, I, I never buy anything with food dyes in it, but that's not to say my kids don't get exposed to it. Sure. Um, but it's like, you look, if I see a, a food dye in it, I put it back and I look for something that has like natural juice or whatever it is, but how did they even come to be and why? Because they're, they are banned in so many countries and it's not hard to do. Is it, is it more of a cost thing while, why they're still used or it's just like our food, you know, the, the entities that be that govern us just don't care or like, how did this even come to be that it's okay to use them? It's so, it's so yeah. You know, it just makes you so angry. Like, it seems like it's such an easy thing. Like, oh, let's just get rid of food dyes. But right. It's and it's not, it, they <laughs> permeate. I mean, they permeated our culture. So I, I don't exactly know the exact starting point of where this happened. Food dyes were in existence back in the fifties, sixties, seventies. What we use now in our food supply is 10 times more than what was used when I was a kid in the seventies. So uh, DuPont makes most of them. They are petroleum based artificial colors, F, D and C, red 40, yellow five, green, blue, uh, you know, uh, green three, blue one, any of these, Allura red, they're starting to now put their names in there instead of the color with the number. So I carry around a cheat sheet so that I know that what, what each color's name is. So those are added to foods to make them more appealing. Uh, orange three used to be added to oranges in Florida 
Florida allowed the practice of spraying oranges because when you pick them at a certain time of year, they may be ripe, but they're still green. So they spray them with orange to make them orange. That practice has been out of practice for 20 some odd years. However, it's still on the books. People still assume that oranges are dyed there as far as so and I I work closely with the researchers at the science for uh, or the I always get this wrong science center for the science and the public interest so I work closely with the researchers there they update me on some changes they have said that fruits aren't really being dyed anymore as far as they know However, they did end up in our food supply uh, a while ago to make things prettier. Unfortunately, Americans have been trained now that our foods need to be these bright colors. They need to look like this. Tricks, tricks removed the food dyes from their cereal. People threw a fit and said that you're they taste different. <laughs> It's, it's because they look different and there's plenty of research on the fact that we use our eyes to eat. Yeah. And so tricks ended up putting the food dyes back in. Mm -hmm. They are inexpensive. They're extremely inexpensive. Again, they're petroleum. They're, they're probably a byproduct from the petroleum industry that they found actually does something so they can work them into different colors. They are pH stable they're also temperature stable so you can cook with them doesn't matter what phs there are right so it is easier to use them using beet juice powder for cupcakes isn't going to work because as soon as you bake them they change a the very interesting color you can put it in the frosting it can work in the frosting but it won't work in baking so the natural products there's they're not comparable yet i say yet because there is a company microma that is working on a uh, fungi-based, sustainable, pH-balanced, temperature-stable, uh, natural food dye to replace the artificial food dyes. They are really close. They are amazing. And so the one of the founders, Ricky, and I stay in touch. And he lets me know how close they're getting and how they have, I think, everything but purple i think right now or maybe blue but they have almost all the colors ready to go for testing soon so that's super exciting because then there won't be an excuse why we're still using these colors so culturally people expect to see these bright colors we have trained children to like these bright colors the majority of artificial food dyes are in kids foods not adult foods right they're in toothpaste they're in deodorants i i really want to I want to know. I've asked, all, I've, I've, I've asked most of my male students, women's deodorants are white. Men's deodorants are generally blue. And I, I've asked my, my male students, cause that's who I have access to. Do you care? Do you need blue deodorant? And they said the same thing. We don't care. Nobody cares, but men's deodorants are blue. Again, having a 17 year old, we've had to hunt for deodorants that work for him that aren't colored. So that's a fun uh, yeah, so you're sticking aluminum plus food dye in your outfit. <laughs> like, let's just go right. natural. <laughs> right, exactly. Not totally natural, but I, you know, like we we have the natural base deodorants, and maybe they don't work quite the same. But hey, I'm right. I'm willing to, I'm willing to to deal with that. There is a company. So my husband's allergic to the artificial to the uh, aluminum based ones. Mm -hmm. So he's always had to use deodorants. And I'm Old Spice. Old Spice has dye free and aluminum free deodorants that work. Yeah, there is a lot. Like every time I go to Target, there's just more and more aluminum free. Yes. I actually order ours from like this lady who makes makes her own in this little small store in Minnesota, and I have them shipped because I just love to support her. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's like, why do you need it in toothpaste? Why do you need it in chewing gum? Why do you, you know, it's just like in so many innocuous places. It's, it's crazy. But when you were talking about the concentration, like from our generation to our kids, is it more the, the concentration that's different in the actual food dyes or do they just put more in now than they used to? There's more products with it. So children are exposed to much higher levels 
than they were back in the 70s. And okay. I don't think the FDA has changed their allowable limits. So they say children can have so much based on how heavy they are. Like, so based on their weight, they can have so much food diet. However, if they eat a bag of Skittles, have a orange crush and fruit loops for breakfast, they're now over the allowable limit because nowhere on any of these packaging does it say this is how much food dye is in here. It just says food dye. So we really don't know. So there was a researcher, Laura Stevens, who went, I think it was Laura Stevens. Was it Laura? Laura Arnold, excuse me. She went and took a bunch of foods that were that kids eat and tested them and got the amounts of food dyes that are in there. And so that's published research, which is very interesting. And it demonstrates that most kids are exposed and eating far more than the allowable limits that, that they should. And so, yes, there's more foods, lots of foods, I, pickles. Right. That's the one that makes me, cause I always say, like, I talk about fasting a lot, like use pickle juice for your fast so you can get some sodium and, but I'm like, always make sure there's no food dye in it. <laughs> Yes. Uh, we were at the store the other day. Yeah. And turmeric works just fine for that. And they use turmeric in there. So we, we were at the store the other day and we have a Smith's, which is a Kroger brand. Kroger is the big brand. They, they own a bunch of stores and there is this whole section of Kroger pickles. They have pickles, pickle relish, sweet relish, dill relish, sweet pickles, baby gherkins, all the pickles. And none of them have artificial colors. And it says right on the front, no synthetic dyes. And it was so exciting. <laughs> this is the little things that make us excited in our house. My son was there. I was like, oh my God, look, look, yeah. look. Because we would have to hunt. We yeah. for a while we didn't even we couldn't find pickle relish. So we were so excited that there's now this whole line that takes up half the shelf of pickles that yeah. are art the artificial dye free, which is amazing to me. And people are becoming more aware. And I think that is, it's important that we become aware and understand it's a real thing. Uh, allowable limits are great for some things. Uh, backtracking on that, the cold medicines that kids take, the liquid cold medicine, uh. <laughs> right? That you just look at it and you know, this is like, dying, right? wait, red. Like they're babies. Why are, you know, it's like from the time they're babies, yeah. it's red or purple. Like why? Right. Pick one. So yeah, red or purple. So mm. if they take the dosage as directed within 24 hours, they're already over they're the allowable yeah. limit. And it's There's, just, when you talk about allowable limits, it makes no sense because that'd be like saying somebody who's very sensitive to see, to gluten, even if, you know, if you're not full fledged celiac disease, like even a little bit of gluten is going to set their gut off, but, oh, we're going to not make this personalized for people. And we're just going to have an allowable limit for everybody. Like it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. No. My, my son couldn't eat a Skittle. One Skittle would send him into a horrible reaction that would last probably about five days. Yellow for him, that's the other thing too. Red will last a day or two. Yellow lasts about five days. So yeah. And then what about the kiddos that are eating yellow every day and not realizing? Right. So they're having this yeah, compound. And cheese. Yeah, and they're just... Yeah. So let's talk about the different colors a little bit. So the main ones are red 40, green three, blue one, and yellow five and six. Five and, six. Um, and then I'm sure just some have multiple <laughs> yeah. green in them, but um, is it, is it, is it just some people react to them differently or is there, um, you know, is there more like you can say, okay, red causes these symptoms in more people, or is it, and yellow causes these, um, it's taking longer to break down and metabolize from what you say, but is there something you can look for? Like, okay, if I'm having this symptom, it's probably green, or is it just, does yeah. it vary from person to person? It can vary. Some kids are more reactive to red. Some are yeah. more reactive to yellow. So red and yellow are called azo dyes, azo. They are 
different in structure. They break down into metabolites. So they do break down. Okay. Green and blue don't break down. So they usually come out of the body the same as they go in. We see this with little studies of little white mice. If you give them enough blue, their nose and hands and feet turn blue. So it stains, it comes out in the body. So what we have found, and this is not for everyone, but green and blue seem to kind of blow through the system a little faster. So less reaction time. Green can last my son six to 12 hours, blue. So blue seems to just make him grumpy and tired. He thinks it doesn't cause any reaction, but he avoids it. Mm -hmm. So it's not that that's something like if he had to eat something that had blue in it, he might be okay. Green, it makes him very manic. He's super happy. He's very wired and very energetic, but mania is not a good state of being. Mania leads to risk-taking behaviors, lack of perception of risk, a lot of other behaviors. Plus it gives him a headache afterwards when he comes down off of it. Because after the that runs through his system, he ends up with a headache. The azo dies for him and for, and this is all anecdotal because there's no research on this. Yeah, yet. it's crazy that there oh, isn't. No research. Oh, if I had if I had the research funding, we would be doing research. The thing is, is the government doesn't do any funding. The FDA doesn't support any funding. When we spoke with the FDA directly, they their stance is it doesn't cause permanent neurological damage, therefore it's fine. And they're studying rats and their studies of rats aren't even comparable to children's behaviors. So they look at rat behaviors, but they're not looking at children's behaviors. Right. If they looked at for those behaviors in the rats, it, it so it's, an, well, it's not causing anything. If you want to study it, it's so right. mind boggling. It's an apples to oranges kind of comparison. And it is really frustrating, but if we were to study it, it would be really nice to see the different behaviors Red universally, there's a there is some research. It's 35 year, years old and older, but there is research showing that it does increase hyperactivity in children. Okay, so that's kind of a universal with our son and with a lot of kids that I have spoken with. It leads to ADHD type behaviors, so the inability to focus, hyperactivity, fidgeting impulsiveness, things that we expect when we look at someone and say, oh, well, they have ADHD. That's what we look for. That's kind of what gets presented. Yellow for our son and for others is different. It can lead to aggressive behaviors. It can lead to that feral look in their eye, that um, oppositional defiant disorder, conduct disorder, intermittent explosive disorder, things that my son could have been diagnosed with if we didn't start to do research and if I didn't have a PhD and if I didn't understand some of the things and if we didn't already have them off red. So those are behaviors where they just have a fit, they throw fits, they, the emotional outbursts are greatly over emphasized for the situation. They have a hard time controlling their emotions the deceit, the lying, those are the things, and really the aggression, you really see the aggression come out, the fits. And those seem to be really apparent with the yellow. And for us, yellow, for him too. So he can recognize when he is eating something with red or green or blue, that there's something kind of going on. Yellow, he has a very difficult time recognizing he has eaten something because it makes him angry and he, in his head, he's justified in being angry. So grandpa was visiting not too long ago. We went, picked up an eclair from the bakery and it didn't occur to me that the pastry cream has yellow in it because we don't usually eat those. The next thing you know, he's arguing me with me over the stupidest. It, it took about two hours, but then he's arguing with me about the stupidest stuff. Just ridiculous and he's adamant and he's mad and in my face and I thought oh this is not typical behavior for him he's 17 right he can be a little moody once in a while but this is over the top and 
So I started doing research, looking at pastry cream ingredients, and I found four and every single one of them had yellow five and yellow six. Like, all right, <laughs> he guaranteed that this had dye in it. So he came out of his room and I explained it to him and he went back in his room and then he kind of collected himself and reminds himself that what I'm feeling is not accurate. And so he can calm himself down sometimes, but now we have, uh, we have an issue. Uh, a friend of ours just started an amino acid. He, he makes amino acid supplements has for many years and we tried it out on him and it actually pulls him out of a, a dye reaction, which is extremely okay. interesting. It works on other kids too. We've tested it. It's all natural, no chemicals, no nothing, but the amino acids work on the brain and help, help the immune system and what's happening. So tying a couple things together, I was also told by some of the researchers that there's an, an idea that there is a gene that codes for allergies. It codes for asthma, eczema, and food allergies. It is possible that gene also codes for artificial food dye reactions, which makes sense because it's an allergy. So when the immune system gets thrown off, we can have reactions. So anyway, he, he, we have a way of helping to him to deal with it. But in the meantime, it's finding the, it's finding the behaviors. It's looking for the behaviors. In my TED talk, I talk about not all kids are reactive to artificial food dyes. Now, are they good for you? No, there are, there are studies demonstrating that they cause cancer in, in rats. However, if you're not reactive, then you can make the choice on whether you want to move, remove them or not. But if kids are having these type of behavior reactions, if they're throwing fits or having meltdowns, or if they're looking like they can't focus or there's a hyperactivity, it doesn't hurt to look at what you're eating and to remove that as adults too, anxiety and depression. So yellow leads to high levels of anxiety in my son as well. His brain races, his body actually heats up. He said he feels really hot. Interesting. And yeah. And I asked him what is tells me all the time. Like, I just feel so hot internally sometimes. And I'm just like, I can't ever like link it to something. And he's got anxiety and bites his nails constantly too. So, ah, I'm, and like you said, it's like a three day leg for yellow. So even yeah. if they're eating clean yeah. for a couple of days and then they get some mild exposure. Wow. That's fascinating. Sorry to yeah. interrupt you, but I was just like, oh my yeah, God. No. <laughs> It's nice when the pieces click together. Yeah. So in second grade, after we had removed the red by April, what we had noticed and his teacher said he would take those, those pink rubber erasers and take his pencil and he would scrape the eraser back and forth until it was just a pile of, of debris. And they thought that was acceptable because he wasn't bothering anybody else. But that to me was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a severe anxiety reaction. So he doesn't have anxiety when he's not eating artificial colors, but he is, he does when he's eating the artificial colors. And I, I asked him once, cause he was super reactive. He had a meltdown. Cause I asked him to get this stop vacuuming and <laughs> which normally is a relief but he got so mad at me because I asked him to stop vacuuming. So after he calmed down, I, I was talking to him and he said, my brain is just racing. I said, okay, well, like what thoughts are you having? He said, all the thoughts that you could possibly have, I've already had them. They're just going through my mind at 90 miles an hour and my body's hot. So that's, it was an interesting revelation. I would love to, to know more if this is something that we can correlate with other kids. Oh Yeah. But, but that is something that we've experienced. And obviously you might have experienced as well. Yeah, that's my older son and my younger son. We were talking a little bit before we started recording. We pretty much linked that at when he has red 40, he gets a headache or a migraine. And, you know, it's always, I don't have that stuff in our house, but it's always like he gets back from baseball and he's had a red Gatorade or he's been at a friend's house. Like, what did you eat? Or he's bought something at school that I don't know about. And it's really it's so challenging once they're 
older teenagers or beyond or driving their own self. And it's like, oh my goodness, why is like, I once, I once went up in their room, like my daughter pretty much stays away from this stuff, but (laughs) boys just tend to buck you more with, with Mm -hmm. the food thing, it seems like. And I found a, like a box of Cheez-Its in the corner. I'm like, what is this? And where did it come from? They're like, oh, those have been there for like six months, mom. It's not a, but you know, like they bought them and they just shoved them in a corner. I'm like, why? I don't, I don't understand, but it's almost like our government is scared to do studies on it because they're afraid what they might find. And they're afraid yeah. they're going to clamp down on, on the food industry. And, you know, there's, there's so much wrong with so many things in the food system. Yeah. Um, but why, why do you think other countries have banned food dyes and Based other on one study and other Based ingredients, but the U S just allows it. It's, it's so mind boggling. We are more of a capitalistic society than other countries. So here in this country, capitalism runs the show. In Europe, one study, one study demonstrated. There was a couple, but one was the final straw back in 2012. By 2014, they had banned artificial colors unless they are labeled. So they have some that are labeled. I think I don't I don't know what the the requirements are for those foods, but most of them are just not allowed. So Kraft makes foods for here with dyes and there for not with no dyes. M and M's they have M and M's in the UK, no dyes. Aural natural mm-hmm. colors, Fruit Loops in the UK. We, uh, we can't wait to go to Europe. So we were supposed <laughs> to go, and things yeah. So next summer, not this summer, next summer we're going to Europe, just so we can eat like things. And, uh, Mm -hmm. when we would go down to Southern California, granny was from South Africa, would take him to a store that was all European and South African foods. And so he, we would come home with a lot of things that he normally doesn't eat, uh, that don't have dyes in them. And so he, so Europe is more focused on the health of their society so being more of a socialist approach, the goal in a socialist type of society is the health of your people. Yeah. And the goal in the capitalistic society is the wealth of your companies. Yeah. So it's much different, do you know, to produce yeah. with or without? I is don't know. Okay. I don't I'm, know. I mean, that would seem like a no brainer. Oh, it costs more to use not, you know, natural food dyes over artificial, but I don't know either. It's just mind boggling when I hear of all of the, not only food, artificial food dyes, but so many artificial ingredients that are banned in other countries that are allowed here in the United States when we're so sick Sick. as a culture. It's like, well, we know our food system. We know that. I mean, it's so different than it was even in our, like you said, like yeah. 20 years ago, it, it's so different. It is. And, and part of that capitalistic society that we have is the, the pharmaceutical industry and sick people keep the pharmaceutical industry yeah. alive. And I, and I hate to say that I sound so I like, know, you don't, don't, don't want to seem like that, but right. But it's, true. it's just true. Unfortunately, it really is true. And yes, the FDA does not want to look into it. <laughs> However, there is a bill, and I cannot remember the number off the top of my head. This is the wonderful parts of being dyslexic. <laughs> There's a bill in California that they are going to be debating this legislative session that calls for labeling artificial food dyes on foods, on packaging uh, as may cause hyperactivity and behavioral issues in children. If that's the case, then oh, right. across the country, because companies aren't going to make something just for California and the rest of the country. Right. Right. Since California has such a large percentage of our people in this country, they are usually the first ones to set the standard. And so they are working on it, which we're crossing our fingers. Also red three. So red three is mostly for cosmetics. However, it's put, and it has been demonstrated to cause cancer in rats, like clear demonstration. And it's put in uh, baby Pedialyte and other things that we give to very small children. 
Uh, not, I haven't found it in anything that my son eats. Okay. Older, but instead it's in baby stuff, which is just mind boggling to me. Right. Right. And well, even just like the baby Tylenol and ibuprofen. I mean, I'd just that we're giving babies <laughs> sure. Tylenol is right? problematic with them that, that with the food dyes in there. It's just like, ah, babies it's, don't care. Babies right? don't care what color it is. Exactly. Oh, let's get into medications that aren't over the counter. Yeah, let's talk about, I mean, food. So, so is it a, let's talk about where like, you, if we're trying to, to remove it, like food, is it just a matter of looking at food labels? And like you said, they're trying, they're starting to get tricky. So, oh, that drives me so crazy, but mm-hmm. foods. And then, yeah, talk about some of the other things that, that. So, so yeah. So at least when you go to the store, you have a list of ingredients that you can read. Okay. Yes. It takes you a little bit longer, but spending some time reading is never harmful. You can look at two different products. First of all, pick the one that has the least amount of ingredients, right? And, but especially the ones that have healthier ingredients and no food dyes are organic. Organic is a great way to go because organic will not contain artificial food dyes. Okay. That's great to know because they're natural. Okay. So we, if, if I don't, if I'm in a hurry, and I don't feel like reading labels and I need something that I haven't had before. I'll grab organic. And a lot of things we have are just organic anyway, but the organic is much better. Again, let's go back to Kroger, Kroger brand. They have a wonderful line of organic products that are not that much more expensive than the products with uh, dyes. Very grateful. And I'm hoping that this continues. Yeah. And once you find a product Mm -hmm. that you know, you like, then, you know, like like you can just stick with it. You just have to find it and do a little research up front and then, then you'll know. And then hope they don't change the ingredients. Yeah, Yeah, that too. (laughs) So my son rarely ever gets sick. He really is quite healthy compared to what he was when he was younger. He's very, very healthy. We're very grateful. Now let's go back two months ago two months ago, a month ago, he ended up with a sinus infection. He had a cold turned into a sinus infection. It was really weird. Normally that doesn't happen to him, but he got sick and we went to the, the pediatrician. They figured out, well, we need this medication for the antibiotic. It's been over a week, whatever. So I said, all right, make sure on the bottom, it says no artificial food dyes, please. And so they know his pediatrician's wonderful. So call it over to the pharmacy, new pharmacy. So we had to change pharmacies because insurance, Mm -hmm. new pharmacy. He hasn't had anything called in there, call it in. And I called them and I said, okay, uh, I want to make sure this medication doesn't have artificial food dyes. So they call back and said, oh yeah, it does. Okay. Well, that's not going to work they're like okay well then call the doctor and have her do the research I was like no 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 why don't you because I played this game before you tell me what medications are similar and which ones do you have without artificial food dyes so she gave me a list of three antibiotics that are very similar that do not contain dyes so then I called the doctor and then had to wait for the doctor to call me back and then let me know which one she's choosing and then have her send that off to the pharmacy hours hours of my time playing intermediary between the doctor and the pharmacist, but this is nothing new. Like I've had to do this several times. So here we are. So he gets his medication. He's on medication for a couple of days. We have to fly to Southern California. Didn't occur to me that flying with a sinus infection could be a painful thing. Upon descent, uh, his sign, one of his, his right sinus um, felt like it was erupting and his put pressure on all of his teeth. And he was in the most pain he's ever been in his entire life. It did not go away, continued to get worse and to stay stable for two hours. So now we're in the urgent care in Southern California to which she said he needs a steroid. I understand. And then we're going to do a a nasal steroid. Okay, great. I know normally we don't do these things, but fine, here we go. So I said, all right, needs to have no artificial food dyes. She wrote that on the bottom, sent it over to the same pharmacy that we use here. Walgreens down there, Walgreens pick up the medication again. I'm on vacation. I'm not thinking, check the, check the medication before we leave, get in the car, open it up to go hand it to them. And they're yellow. Ah. <laughs> so my, my dad flips around, we go over, go inside. And I, they call the pharmacist over and I said, it says no artificial food dyes 
and I need one that doesn't have any artificial food dyes. And I know that this one comes because I had to go again, do the research. How, how do I know it has dyes? So I looked at the tablet, the name, the shape and the manufacturer. And then they give me the list of ingredients. Okay. Of ingredients. So I'm really good. I, my degree's yeah, in research, yeah. but I have been, I've become That's an even better been researcher. A while. <laughs> yeah. So then I looked up an, uh, an option. So I go up to the counter and I'm, I, I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. He looks at me and goes, what are artificial food dyes? Oh, I'm sure. He's a pharmacist. No, GI doctors have no idea about nutrition either. It's mind boggling. Like, like you're, wait, but you're a GI doctor. Yeah, you're a chemist. You have a degree in chemistry. Right. Oh. So I had to explain to him. So he comes over, he goes, the white ones, are those okay? I said, hang on a second. So I looked at the shape. I looked because they were octagonal. Looked them up, looked at the manufacturer. Okay. <laughs> he could pull this up faster than I can. So right. pull it up. Boom. Yes, those are fine. But again, we spent three hours on this escapade because it took so long for, yeah. So fortunately, like we used CVS pharmacy, they had emblazoned at the top of his folder, artificial food dye, reactive, allergic, all over it. They would call me say, okay, you just got prescribed this medication and it has artificial colors in it. So we suggest this. They were fantastic. So anyway, so I've had to train doctors. I've had to train pharmacists. I've had to train so many individuals who just are not aware that this causes a reaction. Like, how do you think a medication got bright red? <laughs> I Tylenol. Took, yeah. Like we really, I know, like we really don't use Tylenol ibuprofen, but we have a bottle here and I literally like Tylenol. I'm like, why is this Tylenol bright red? This is crazy. So foods, medication, personal care products, we mentioned gum candles, mm -hmm. um, any other major places people should be looking. And then how do they go about kind of testing? Is this a food diet issue or is this something else? If they're suspecting it either on themselves or on children? Uh, fortunately, it's really easy to test. Oh. I mean, easy. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. just don't eat it. Um, so you, <laughs> you uh, eliminate your dyes in your toothpaste. Cause again, we know sublingual goes right into the system yeah. really quick. Quickly. So, yeah. Quickly. So toothpaste and mouthwash. So we just find a white one. Now titanium dioxide is a food dye. It has also been demonstrated to cause cancer. However, it is not petroleum based and it does not cause reactions the same in children as the artificial FD and C colors, red 40 L5. So di titanium dioxide can cause reactions in some people. Okay. So that is something to look for. However, when it comes to a petroleum based reaction, it does it. So I'm just saying that a lot of the toothpastes have titanium dioxide. So find a natural toothpaste. Tom's has a great natural toothpaste, right? So find a natural toothpaste to try out for a week, two weeks, let's say two weeks, uh, eliminate it from your air fresheners and things like that. Our, uh, using a diffuser with natural essential oils yeah. is fantastic. We've been doing that for years now. We get really good oils. There's a couple brands that have really good oils. We use doTERRA because they can tell you where it's been sourced. I know that he's not getting any extra added ingredients. It's been third party tested. So I'm, I'm really comfortable in that his room smells wonderful and he's a teenager. So, you know, right. there's, a, there's a bonus there, right? So eliminate all the unnatural things, eliminate medications. Again, Tylenol's bright red, the off brands are often white. So you can find those that don't have any red 40 in them. If you have to continue to take medications. If you have medication to, from your doctor, you can talk to them about finding ones that don't have artificial colors in them. Foods, reading the labels, just read all the labels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Find it's something. Stuff initially, but then. Yeah, you it is. Yes. Initially it is. And it could be quite shocking when you go through and look right. at all the things that have the dyes in it. Just kind of like when we, we eliminated high fructose corn syrup when the kiddo was like three. Uh -huh. That was a shocker. So it's the same thing of just reading the labels and avoiding all of those products for two weeks. Let's say you don't have to throw them away. Just put them 
it, put them away, put an X on them. Don't eat those for two weeks. See how you feel. See how the kiddo feels. Watch. Yes, teenagers can be sneaky. However, if they feel a difference, they're not going to eat it. Once they recognize, and, and you can get kids on board by saying, hey, we're going to do some research. We're going to test this out for a week or two. Okay, so just a week, just two weeks, we're just going to do this. And then you can go back to eating your regular food. If they are reactive and they feel better and then they go eat something with, let's say, red or yellow in it, and then they feel terrible, then you can point out feeling terrible because of the color. Let's find brands that don't have the color in them and let's let's just not eat color anymore. And they, I, they're the ones that don't argue. They're the ones. I can look at something and go, hey, bud, look, there's no dyes. He'll be like, let me see. He has to read it. He has to double check. He has to know because he's the one that feels terrible. Right. Right. And, and they start to take ownership of that. Littles, little start to take ownership of that. It's, it is easier when they can feel the difference. So you play it as a game for a couple of weeks, you test it out and you will see a difference in generally a week. Some kids take longer compounding that we don't have enough time to talk about it, but there are <laughs> other additives that can also cause problems. Sure. TBHQ. BHA and BTA are three of the ones that can cause problems in kids. Our son is reactive to TBHQ, just like it, same as yellow. It, it, his behaviors are very similar to yellow. He is not reactive to BTA and BHA. Okay. We've tested those out. So, and it's to test them out. So you eliminate it for two weeks, you introduce one, just like when you're feeding baby food to a kiddo, right? One at a time. So then you let them eat something with red and then you wait and see if the behavior changes. Okay. Then you go clean again, no dyes for a couple days and then let's try yellow. Okay. And then let's wait a week and then let's try, try green. So those are the ways that you can, can test. I suggest doing it over the summer when they're not in school, Yeah, uh, but there is also no time like the present. We've got Valentine's day coming up. We have, you know, <laughs> that this may air after Valentine. Well, it will probably air after Valentine's day because that's tomorrow. Um, but we have Easter, we have Christmas, we have Halloween, we have St. Patrick's Day, we have all of these holidays that are around color. Yeah, and candy. And, and candy. <laughs> and so finding other fun ways of celebrating without, or using the natural colors. There's great ways of dyeing Easter eggs with natural almost, stuff. Yes, you can almost find something for every product. Do you suggest after introducing one of the colors, like waiting a certain period? Yes. Yeah, so like, especially yeah. for yellow it takes five days to get out of your system. So you don't want to do anything after that. So I would say uh, waiting a week, you probably don't have to wait a week for red or green or blue, but you will want to wait a week after you test yellow. Okay. So the other ones uh, seem to blow through the system a lot faster. They get metabolized a lot faster. So, but yellow seems to be the longest. Okay. So, I know you're yeah. running out of time here, but I have one more question because yeah, um, sure. I just feel like so many people don't understand the enormity and severity of some people reaction, reacting to certain things. And I would get this when my son was very ill for a while too. And it's like you would send them somewhere and, and most people were very understanding, like, please don't, you know, if he has this, we're going to deal with this. <laughs> then, you know, some people just don't understand the enormity. And even like my husband who doesn't react to anything and has always eaten anything and everything he wants with no reaction. And he always says to me, well, I ate that as a kid and I was fine. And, you know, I had acne and I was, you know, it's like, there's never... <laughs> it's so hard to explain. Like, do you have an approach where, you know, like you're sending your kid to somewhere and like that you can just uh, like help people to understand the enormity of how some people react. Like, I just feel like some people just who don't have issues, just think that it's not a big deal. Right. Yes. My mom's celiac. I am what my doctor calls like pre-celiac. So I am reactive to gluten. And if I keep eating it, I will probably end up flipping it to an autoimmune. So I, I get, I understand my husband is also, he can eat anything he wants. Bless him. Which uh, is great for them, but it is, <laughs> yeah. it is. Uh, so our, when I take my son somewhere and it used to be, I would try to explain and that he's reactive and this and this, 
I finally now just say he is highly allergic to artificial food dyes. And if they ask me what happens, I said, well, he becomes severely psychotic. <laughs> right. You don't want that in your restaurant. And, and that stops that. It really does work. It's very, yeah. it's very interesting that I have to go that. And, and it's not untrue. Right. Doctors have said he is allergic. So anaphylaxis is not the only allergic reaction that we have. His body goes into a reaction that is an allergic reaction. It's not like, it's like telling someone with a peanut allergy, oh, we'll only have a little, it's okay. No, we don't do that because we know that that can be extremely dangerous. Well, giving my son just a little is extremely dangerous too. So I have just got cut to the chase and say, he's highly allergic and he becomes severely psychotic. And that is enough for people to go, well, I don't want to deal with that. And, and so they're, they were much better at it. His teachers were all fantastic. The parents in his class were all fantastic. They'd bring him a white cupcake instead of the ones that were colored. And then they started just bringing in ones that just weren't necessarily colored for everybody else. Get the little sticks to put in there to decorate them up and stuff. There's other ways. Right. So, um, so I just am pretty forthright with it when we go to a restaurant and ask a question. And if they look like they don't care, they look like they don't know, but they're going to wing it. I'll either call a manager over if it's serious or we find something else that he knows is pretty safe, but I don't trust people. I, I, I hate this because I'm extremely optimistic and I love trusting people, but I don't trust people with my son's best interest when it comes to those things. And so I kind of make it very clear up front. He's highly allergic. And so I just need to make sure that this does not contain that. Once I say that people are much more willing to go, okay, well, let me go look and I'll go check. They usually, I give them what they're looking for in the ingredients. They look in the ingredients and they can come back or often they will come back with the ingredients and say, will you read this and look for me? If it's ever a question, we don't eat pickles when we go out. We, there's lots of things we just don't eat when we go out. And because odds are they contain dyes. So we just really are more skeptical and more aware. I have 10 years under my belt on this one, uh, unfortunately. And so does my, my, my kiddo. So it's more of just this habit now of, of trying. People are afraid to tell others, Hey, my kid can't eat that. Cause it's going to hurt some other people's feelings. Get over that. Right. Tell them straight up, pretend like your child had a peanut allergy and they would die. If they ate it, you just tell them he, they cannot eat this period. Yeah. End of discussion. I know you may not understand it. I respect that, but it is it is what it is. I've had nurses roll their eyes at me. We were in the ER. My son was injured. They wanted to give him Tylenol. I said, whoa, I carry, I carry medications on me that are die free for that stuff like this. And she, you know, rolls her eyes at me and walks off. That's fine. I don't take anything personal anymore. You just can't, you just have to have those boundaries when it comes to what you're eating, what other people are eating. You just have to say, I just can't, we can't do that. So yeah. 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 I, I've found that that's the best approach to get straightforward. This is what's going to happen. If, well, you've given us so much information to think about and to apply. And I know we didn't talk a whole lot about adults. Like you mentioned that earlier, but how this can follow you into adulthood. And I think you said 50% of adults don't outgrow a food dye yeah. um, intolerance or allergy, whatever you want to call it. Um, but please remember, you know, like that, that may be an issue. So um, a lot of the listeners have kids, grandkids, but if you don't, and you're still having symptoms or think that you're reacting to, there's such good, great information in this podcast. Now, do you work with families or anyone else, or um, if people are having trouble applying this, or do you have yeah. more information that people can find you at? So I do have a website that has some information that's livingdiefree.org. I have, yes, people find me through Facebook. I have a living die free. It's a children living die free on Facebook. So people find me and, and I can give you my email address and people are definitely welcome to reach out to me. I, I talk to parents a lot, like weekly, and I'm happy to talk to parents or anyone that's interested because again, the more that we know, the better lives that we can have and the better lives that the children can have more importantly. And 
they don't, they don't know, they don't know what's going on and it's up to adults. And there's a lot of adults. I, I really want to start shifting focus to adults. Like you said, anxiety and depression and in any of the behavioral disorders or behavior issues that you have or health issues, eczema, rashes, uncontrolled rashes, headaches. There's some things that, that dyes can cause in adults that people are just not aware of. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to eliminate, eliminate one thing and feel so much better. So right. within a couple of weeks, like your whole life can change. So yeah. Yeah, these things have just, you know, we've, we've just accepted so many things and, and poor health <laughs> is being acceptable. And, oh, that's just how I am. That's just how my body is. My body's broken. Like, no. And, and if it is just a, a food diet that you can eliminate and feel better and and, you know, trying for two weeks, what's that going to hurt? You know, it's just going to, it's okay. just going to help you in the long run. So thank you so thank much you. for coming on and giving us all of this information and so much to think about and, um, to try out and probably give people a lot of hope too. just thinking, oh, I never thought about that. So, um, thanks so much for coming on. You've been a wealth of knowledge. Thank for all of the work that you've done. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, and thank you for sharing, allowing me to share this information with everyone.